You feel it in your Pyrrhus. It is quiet settling in. The wasteland is expanding and a firestorm is imminent. It's time to move, listeners. You are entering a story about Promethean, the created. Welcome to Chroniclers of Darkness, a narrative horror podcast set in the RPG New World of Darkness. Due to the adult language and violent nature of the stories told, this podcast is rated M for Mature. And we strongly encourage listener discretion. Episode 3 Torment We drove south slowly for many days, using back roads so as not to be noticed. Then we abandoned the Chrysler LeBaron and bought a Chevy Caprice with Rita's cash. We made it to the southern Appalachian Mountains, the deep woods of West Virginia. Long as you keep your head down, nobody gonna bother you. I drive into town now to the general store maybe once a week, so self-aware that I'm clumsy when I buy groceries. The can of beans shakes in my hand, my foot pushes a bag of flour onto the floor, and I shoot up, looking at the man who looks at me from behind the counter. He hasn't gone back to look at his newspaper. He approaches me in the aisle and waves to me. Fuck, no. Disquiet's come too soon. Excuse me, miss. He says, Is your name Madge? What? Oh, I- I'm so sorry to disturb you. I just got up the courage today to ask. You remind me of an old friend who used to live in the next county over. Not good with people. What would Rita say? Would it make you happy to call me Madge? <laughs> Uh, only if it is your name. Again, sorry to disturb you. Uh, don't worry none about the flower. I'll sweep it up as soon as you leave. My fault for putting it on the ground level. <laughs> Just take care now. World ain't safe till we lock her up, you know? He goes back to his newspaper. Good. Disquiet hasn't hit him yet. Gotta move fast, but not seem desperate. Can't draw nobody's attention to me. Can't have them find Rita. I drive the Caprice back up the mountainous dirt road. When I reach the log cabin, I throw the camouflage tarp we found in the shed over the car. Carefully, step over the tripwire so I don't sound the alarm clock in the kitchen. The spirits don't make it up this far up the mountain. The deer, too, have stopped coming up into the backyard when the grass turned brown and then to dust. There's a yellowish cloud now has fallen over the property amid Rita's torment. I can't do nothing to calm her down or make her feel better. Our kind, Prometheans, we fall into this and we can't do nothing about it. All I can do is keep her quiet, keep her safe during the day I found work doing landscaping for a new hotel in the next town over. They were happy to have someone who spoke English finally, because all their previous workers were taken. Some rumors point to the West Virginia Mothman. Some rumors claim it was ice. They look at me weird for not having a smartphone and none of the apps. Can't enter no information about nobody. Suddenly... I don't feel so safe. Whenever they mention it, I think about Danny, and I feel the bite of torment at the back of my neck. The work is good. The work is a distraction. Pulse, pulse, twitch, smell, flare, flex, pulse, flicker, breath, 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 smell, pyros, yes. Pyros, near, near, here, awaken, breathe, breathe, hunt, 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 hunt. During the nights, I sit vigil on the front porch, watching the leaves shift, the spirits settle in. 
I haven't heard owls nor crickets nor frogs for almost a week. I almost hear wind moaning as if in pain. Rita's wasteland is pouring out of her, infecting the land. In the far off distance, I think I hear wolves howling. I don't think we can stay here for much longer. They'll find us. I think about the name Madge Gunthry. It's there in my dreams. Someone I I'm calling to, or they're calling to me. I think about the lake at the bottom of the mountain, and the legends about burials at sea. I think about how old the lake must be, how grand its spirit must be, and I'm thinking that there may yet be a way for me to help Rita. I don't care. I do not care. The compass, my holy anather, the thing I stole from the husk in Hartford, its arrow only points south onto the symbol for the wasteland. No matter how I turn it, it points to me. I am a wasteland, a septic leak of pyros, an infection. The compass, holding it stops me from pursuing happiness. My joints are stiff. Minutes go by before I remember to blink. I don't even breathe in until my chest hurts, and I don't care. <sighs> Nearly three years ago, I was awoken. The pyros in my chest ignited my brain, pumped my heart, and I moved like a rattled flag in the wind. My creator told me how beautiful I was. He taught me as much as he could. Books about history, literature, anatomy. I read decades of failed attempts to create someone like me. Since I only slept two hours a night, they had me enter data to keep me occupied. He had friends come over to meet me, tell me jokes, ask me questions. When they weren't talking to me, they were always on their phones, as if recharging their ears before speaking to me again. How wonderful a phone must be to have unlimited people to talk to. My creator would saute dove hearts, roast beef hearts, and feed them to me. One of his fellow cult members was a renowned doctor, Dr. Rita Morelli. My creator and she, well, they fell in love. There's no other way to put it. The cult celebrated my creation, their triumph of conjuring and sealing the divine fire within a willing vessel. I asked my creator to stay close to me, to teach me to dance, to look at me the way he looked at Dr. Morelli. I pleaded with him. I begged him. I forced him, first with my hands, and then with my pyros, to love me physically, as he would with Dr. Morelli. When I practiced the refinement of Aram, I tried to change my face to look like Dr. Morelli, and I failed. I was too young, too inexperienced. I couldn't copy skin, but I could copy voices. So I used my creator's phone to call Dr. Morelli. When she came by, I did as I was taught. I dressed myself to please my creator. I ate her heart. I pulled her face across the bones of my skull, and the divine fire flared and cauterized the flesh together, welding Dr. Morelli to my face. I called for help told them the Promethean had escaped, and later that night, I did. And three years later, it is too fucking hard to get a human to tell you what they want. Why is it so difficult? If there's a spider that scares you, kill the spider. If you are hungry, eat. If you are sad, do what makes you happy. How is it so easy, but so difficult that I can't handle it? I can't fake it. Thank you for using the Psychin app. This is Dr. Rita Morelli. How are you feeling today? Is that you? Mr. Selke? Yes, yes, it's me. You are near. I want to meet you. I can't. Why not? I'll disappoint you. There's nothing but the shortcomings of the flesh. Nothing but failure. If you touch me, you'll only be repelled away. That won't happen. I promise. I'm not like other men. I would never let you go. Do you believe me? 
Yes, but there's another person with me, someone who won't let me out of her sight. She clings to me. Can you make it to the lake? There's a resort on the western shore. You'll see the docks and the canoes. I can try. I must go. She's coming close. Rita, we need to move on. There are things in the woods circling the house. I've made a bargain. We're going to cleanse you of this torment. Please, you gotta move. Don't touch me. I can get up myself. Where do you want to go? To the lake at the base of the mountain. The lake? Oh. Oh, what are we waiting for? This podcast is brought to you by Datamass, connecting you with other people when you need them most. Loneliness is a national epidemic, and Datamass is combating it with the newly improved Psych Out and Psych In apps, two free-for-download apps connecting you with a certified psychologist at any point, 24 hours, 7 days a week. Download in front of a mirror and screen cap the barcode above your face to receive your first hour-long session for free. Critical data collection is imperative in order to launch Project All Thought. Call now. Psychologists are standing by and are always standing by, ready to listen to you. Can't download the app? Are you even trying to get better? Visit your nearest data mass medical tent at your town hall, ATM, or wherever you see those silly inflated yellow eagles. Isn't the yellow eagle silly? Children under 13 years old will be given a free candy of some kind. Data mass. You know more than you think we know. And we need to know. This podcast is brought to you by Union National Securities, the newest member of the Data Mass Collective, or as we call it on the compound family. UNS has been organizing neighborhood watches in cities all across America, and after the success of the Hartford Alien Rejection March, our numbers are growing. Call today for a free consultation with America's most trusted home security team. Our team of home designers will remodel your home with trigger-release gun cabinets. Your own wife won't recognize the fake panels beneath the fireplace mantle, in the kitchen, or above the baby's crib. Because who are you going to trust? The government? Network Zero? The Ashwood Abbey? The Knoll Mysterious? Your own family? You don't know where they go during the day. So chill out. Put your fears of outsiders on ice and call today to report any suspicious activity. Union National Securities. Walls. Protect. All contracts signed and data collected become property of Datamass and Datamass Enterprises. I've always wondered why it is you keep listening. Are you recording my voice out of courtesy, habit, or do you truly care? Do you th want me to change? Do you think I can change for the better? Last summer I mentioned bedsheets to my wife, and then the online ads started showing up. You are the ultimate reaffirming servant, making the king's reign so easy he forgets to clean the castle. You make it so easy to convince me that I'm right. At my most lonely, I am also most right. Why is that? I won't have you lull me into stupidity with instant gratification. You see, I'm expecting company soon, and you will not stand in her way. I'll teach her better than I was able to teach you. I was right to tell my wife she was working too hard. Too much swimming can be unhealthy do long-lasting damage to your arms. And if she got a hold of her silver swimsuit again, she may have jumped into the lake and never returned. When the locals started making rumors about the Mothman, I knew it would hurt our business. But when the wolves moved in, migrating to the other side of the mountain, it became personal. I told my wife it was no longer safe to go swimming after certain hours. They were so persistent, the wolves. Always just out of the camera sight, always footprints around the traps, always just outside the back door, waiting by the catering hall's dumpster, ready to huff and puff and take away everything that I had built. She knew our time together was limited. My wife did. She knew I could not keep her forever, and she did not want to be kept. And if she tried to run or swim away, the wolves were always at our door, 
so the wolves had to go. They were smart, the way they isolated us. It made me so angry when my wife ran outside that night, down the pier. They were fast, faster than I. They took her skin, so I took theirs. Build up something, and the world takes it away. That's what it is to be human. It's interesting. So many taxidermists get into the hobby for the sake of the challenge. The chance to play, not God, but perhaps some gentler, delusional artistic counterpart to Dr. Victor Frankenstein. You both lived to spite me, my wife and the wolves. And... Sometimes I think you as well, but I get to keep them close now, and side by side, we watch the lake night after night in stoic, longing silence. But I am expecting company soon. I should... change. We use a deer path and head down the mountain. Rita can't see in the dark none the way that I can. So I have to pull her and stop her when the rocks loosen under me. Her arms are covered in long, deep scrapes, but she pushes on, almost skipping behind me, laughing. It is good to hear her laughing again. At the base of the mountain, I struggle against the loose stones to not fall into the lake. If I can just get Rita to the pier, about 50 feet away from us, at least she'll be safe. When the woods are quiet, you are right to be suspicious. According to the next town over, the West Virginia Mothman is nearly eight feet tall, bearing giant wings, all white, giant red eyes. People aren't just going missing from overtaking opioids, neither. Opioids don't leave your body in pieces like a crash test dummy across a cornfield. The Mothman can't be real, but given the stillness of the air around us, Disquiet or not, I'm liable to believe anything. Behind me, Rita trips, landing hard on her wrists. A branch has pierced her hand, and when I suggest we pull it out, she dismisses it and keeps moving forward. It's only fair, after all the trouble she's caused me, for me to carry her this last part of the journey. Forty feet to the pier. Every branch step echoes. I have to keep awake, have to keep looking. So who else is hearing my heavy feet? Thirty feet to the pier. A rustle of dried leaves. Maybe a skunk family. Maybe just a big one. Twenty feet from the pier. Please, let it just be paranoia or a curious deer. I hear movement ahead of us. Could just be fallen stones caused by us. But I've never been that lucky. I get to the pier and move Rita to the end of it. Yellow, plastic canoe, covered in pond scum and wet leaves is waiting for us. I gotta get her to it. I know we can. Rita, listen to me. Take the midnight staff, take the oar, go to the center of the lake as far out as you can. I hear thunder. That ain't thunder. Something else made this wasteland you've been feeding. It ain't your wasteland. It never was. You're just adding fuel to the fire. We're gonna snuff it out. I'm not the cause? No, no, you done nothing wrong. You never did. Let me help you now. I don't deserve this. I couldn't learn enough. Don't leave me alone. Ugh, my head feels so heavy. It ain't you that started your suffering. But you're gonna finish it. There's something else in this area. Now take the staff. Go to the center of the lake. When the water glows, follow the light. Wait, no, wait, come with me. Can't. Gotta hold him off. Go. Hold what off? Tell me your name. My name is Rita's friend. Shadows at the edge of the pier. I draw my pistol. Take aim. One thing. Walking on four legs, then stands on two legs, then waits. Too dark and cloudy to see it clearly. Can't take my eyes off it to follow Rita. Please row the boat, you skinny bitch. In twilight, I see the spirit of the lake moving up to meet Rita. It opens its mouth and welcomes her beyond the veil and through the gauntlet. This is the bargain I made today. 
that the lake would absorb her pain, remove it like a poison. She will be cleansed in the aftermath, but first we must spark the change in her pyros. We must ignite a firestorm. There are a few songs about the lake, because it is a place where people leave their curses behind. The lake holds stagnation, ugliness sinks to its depths, yet life will always grow cautiously around the lake. The spirits are reacting to her. Yes, water rises up in thin branches around Rita. The blackness lights up in cool greens and muted blues as spirits of peace rise to swarm over the boat. Rita must be holding the midnight staff, so she must be seeing the spirits rise and surround her. She is screaming. She sees them. Good. The creature on the pier is midway down when I hear its footsteps. It reaches into a piece of clothing it wears and lights a flashlight. The light creeps up to my belly, my chest, soon to blind me, so I cock the pistol. I'm about to fire when I hear something I never expected. A voice. A familiar voice, though from a dream. Mama? Mama, is that you? It's me, your boy Charles. The person turns the flashlight to shine on his own eyes. I do not recognize him. Caucasian, male, mid-twenties maybe. Scruffy beard, pale and uneven. Matted hair that hasn't been washed in weeks. The eyes, they aren't natural. Solid red, reflective like a cat's. Mama! The man says again, this time stepping forward and reaching. I thought all the other hunters had run. Daddy lost his mind when we fought against the wolves. You gotta leave this lake, Mama. It's evil. People come to this lake to die. Stop calling me Mama. I don't know who you are. My name is Charles Gunthry. And your name is Madge Gunthry. I see, on the other side of the lake, a wooden cabin linked to a pier. If I knew how to swim, I would try to reach it, but my idiot companion has pushed me in a boat toward the center of the lake in the middle of the night. It seems I have more immediate problems. There are heavy winds rocking my canoe violently. As long as I hold the leather staff, I see more to the world. Shapes. Lights and the water takes the shape of a face large enough to open its mouth and swallow my canoe. There is nothing in my mind but panic now. In my panic, my pyros ignites, flares, burns, turns immediately into steam. I am guided by nothing but fear. I snap the midnight staff against my knee and I hear legions cry out in pain. The spirits around me despair and howl without words. My pyros reacts poorly like it did in Hartford. It lashes out a greasy, heavy light like ignited crude oil. When it touches the spirit of the lake, it freezes immediately. The pyros pours out of me and its weight, its ugliness, tainted by my despair, leaves my body. I am sharing in the spirit's pain and they are sharing in mine, but they are also leeching the worst from me. My body grows heavy tired and it falls into the water, which freezes instantaneously. Part of my arm is still submerged in the ice. I feel a heaviness as a blanket is thrown over me, and a force is exerted on my shoulders as if someone is pulling me. Come on, I've got you. I am cold. More importantly, you are safe. Come along, Dr. Morelli. We've so much to discuss tonight. Chroniclers of Darkness is written and produced by Uncle Yo, with performances by Gretchen Poole, logo by Jesse Pascal. Special thanks to Onyx Path Publishing for giving us a whole new world of darkness for our pilgrimage. Game on, include everyone, and remember that death is as easy as lead to gold.